So if you're like most of us, you feel very connected to God and to your family during the latter part of the year, like Thanksgiving, Christmas, and New Year's. And depending on where you are in life, sometimes the opposite is true. Let's just face it, holidays can be lonely, spiritually and emotionally. So at the line within us, I often talk about our community and how it has been such a blessing to operate and how great it has been to see the incredible growth of men inside the community. Here, we regularly have genuine connections and conversations that I hear so many are searching for and they simply just aren't finding. So on behalf of our team and of the men that already are in the community, we want to take an opportunity to invite you in at a significantly reduced rate starting on Black Friday and running through midnight on New Year's Eve. With this opportunity, you can capture 50% savings and even better, get plugged into a community that will be there to support, encourage, and challenge you along the way. I hope to see you soon and head over to thelionwithin.us. That's thelionwithin.us to get access of this offer today. Welcome to The Lion Within Us, a podcast serving Christian men who are hungry to be the leaders God intends you to be. I'm your host, Chris Granger. Let's jump in. All right, fellas, spiritual kick all time. Let's get right into it, okay? So we're going to be in the book of Proverbs this week. Look at one chapter, chapter three, verse 27, okay? Just one, one verse. It says, do not withhold good from those to whom it is due when it is in your power to act. All right, now, that's an important verse, guys. Now, I know you, some of you guys that are watching on YouTube probably wondering what's up with this gear, this, this orange shirt, this steel hat. Don't worry. We're going to get to that. But look, this verse is important. We need to figure out how we can simplify and apply it to our life, right? First thing we need to know is where is the book of Proverbs? That's very important. So if you just open up your Bible <clears throat> about midway, you'll usually hit somewhere in the Psalms and then just flip a little bit to your right and then you'll hit Proverbs, okay? And uh, so this is a a, um, a good practice we talk about the land all the time is just read a proverb a day. There's 31 proverbs. There's usually 30 to 31 days in a month. Whatever day the month is, read that proverb. OK, so <clears throat> we're going to be talking about this week. I'm going to share with you and one of the most impactful things we've ever done at the land within us. I'm going to just unpack the story. Uh, of some things that we that we learned that we sh- that we were able to be a part of in walking out this verse of Proverbs three twenty seven. <clears throat> That's really what it's all about. So, fellas, again, what I'm sharing with you on the spiritual kickoff, if you're new to the line within us, are, is simply my reflections upon praying, thinking, talking to people, listening to the Holy Spirit on this scripture. Because there's plenty of pastors out there and, and, and churches who just who just preach on the text. I'm going to take it a little bit deeper to try to help you see how you can simplify and apply it. Because that's how I have to, for me, that's just what works. I, have my, I ask God, okay, how can I apply this to my life? And he usually reveals something in a very simple way because I'm a simple guy. And hopefully that's going to encourage you. And these reflections, guys, this is the core of what the line within us is all about. Having real, authentic, meaningful, transparent conversations with each other that are going to challenge each other for sure, but it's going to all hopefully help us grow closer to Christ together. So if you like that kind of thing, if you don't have that in your life right now, I know lots of churches struggle with this where it's, it's so surface level. Let's just be real. There's never any real conversation going on in a church. So if you, if you're lacking that, and you want somewhere where you can just 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 let it all out and just be surrounded by brothers in Christ. I encourage you to check out the line within us. Come over to the community. Hop in there to see what it's all about. All right. So now let's think about this scripture here today. Do not withhold good from those who are doing whom it is due when it is your power to do it. And as Christian men seeking to be the leaders that God has called us to be, <clears throat> we have to be reminded all the time of a couple components in our life. First of all, we got salvation. You should be sharing the good news of the gospel with others all around, right? Then you got the whole process of sanctification. And fellas, this is where we lean in 
at the lion. This is iron sharpens iron. We got to chip out a way to grow closer to Christ. Then you have a third component. And the third component is so essential to, to, to the complete Christian walk. That third component is service. Service. And this Proverbs 3.27 challenges us on the nose. If it's within your ability to do it, you better not withhold it. Okay, this is not just some encouragement to act. It's a commandment. It's, it's, a, it's direct. I love it. It calls us to take responsibility. And sometimes that means writing a check. This ain't enough, boys. No. Sometimes you got to step up, step into action, and use the blessings that God has given you to make a difference for others. So the first thing we need to do is understand service as a response to God's blessings. Because you, each of us, let's just face it, we've been blessed in unique ways, right? Through your time, your talents, your, your resources, or maybe you got uh, specific spiritual gifts that you have. They're not just for your benefit, though. Those blessings are meant to be shared. And it's your obligation. If it's in, within your power to act for the good of others, you better do it. And here's, I want, I want to give you a couple of things to think about as you're moving this forward uh, of, of practical ways, okay, that you can take your blessings and put them towards acts of service. You can be, <clears throat> and you can encourage others from service by your power of your presence. Because sometimes you often feel like, let's just be real, that only the grand gestures or that big financial support count as serving. But sometimes the best way that you can serve others is just by show up, bro. Just show up. Maybe you just visit somebody when they're, they're having a tough time. Or you lend a hand to that neighbor. And they're, maybe their yard is just getting away, getting out of hand. They just, need, they just need a little bit of help. Just do it for them. Or do you have your little Timothy that you're mentoring younger than you? that you're trying to help grow to understand what it means to be a Christian man. But being present can be life-changing because your presence and time are gifts that you can't outsource those to. You can't outsource your presence to someone else. Don't make it. It's impossible. And your time is your time. Steward it well. Now, the second thing I want you to think about is that you could be an inspiration to others. Because you should, it's, it's leading by example. And that's what leadership's all about. This isn't just a directive out of Proverbs for individual action. No, this is an opportunity to inspire others. Because when you make serving others your priority, you're raising the standard of everyone around you, especially in your family, your community, and your church. So getting hands-on is key. Jesus was hands-on. You just are. And he led by serving others, didn't he? So every time you take a step to help someone else, you're planting seeds of inspiration for others to come along behind you and do just that. Now, third thing I want you to think about, as we're kind of working through this, is be grateful and generous. Because the fact that you can serve is a good reminder of how blessed you are, <laughs> right? Because you have the ability to give yourself, whether through that, you know, skills you have, or your resources you have, or just simply encouragement. It reveals the abundance that God has given you. Every act of service gives you an opportunity to practice gratitude and generosity. And it keeps us in alignment with what God's calling us to do. It just does. You just, you're never going to feel worse serving. You're, you're going to be more blessed by serving others than anything you'll ever be able to bless others with. And when you start recognizing how blessed you are, you draw closer to God. And then you start becoming a better steward of what he's given you. You'll serve even higher. So uh, some things, some areas to think about serving. We've already talked about a couple. How about your family? Serve those closest to you. Simple acts of kindness, forgiveness, or encourage others to, you know, just to build upon that foundation of love and respect within your family or your community. Just look for opportunities to serve locally. You shouldn't have to look for, far. Maybe it's community projects. Maybe it's uh, volunteering. It's, you know, uh, food pantries or shelters or things like that. 
and or ask your church. Most churches have some type of local community outreach. See what that looks like. And then you could serve others by mentorship because that's making an investment in someone else's growth. So I'm really big on mentoring young men. Okay. And this is a big deal. You know, I got one of my life has been in my life for quite a while. And, and, and sometimes I go through seasons where I don't see him enough and I can tell, but you have to do this. You have to take the time and then share. You got to be real. When you go to mentor someone, don't just preach to them. Uh -uh. Share what's really going on in your life. What you learn from walk with them. And then daily interactions. I mean, just look around. It doesn't have to be an organized event. Now, I'm going to talk about an organized event on our next episode. You don't have to be that. Just daily interactions. You know what? Just a word of encouragement to someone else, bro. It's such a big deal. Or just listen. Sometimes folks just need to talk. All these ways are practical ways to take Proverbs 3.27 and bring it to life. Because we got to remember, God's blessed us all with these, with these different gifts. And he gives us opportunities to do good. It's up to us whether or not we're going to act on them. Proverbs tells us to step up and serve, right? Not a secondary part of what, of what we're supposed to do, but it's a crucial part. <clears throat> this should be what we do. It should drive us. But that whole idea of salvation, sanctification, and service are essential to living out our faith fully. Fully. And when you start prioritizing service, you're going to start building some things around you, like stronger communities, stronger churches, stronger families, stronger mentors. Man, the impact is huge. But you have to make a decision. Are you going to prioritize this? I hope you do. And this week, I'm going to try to encourage you. Just from some basic little, little things we did at the line within us. As you go into Thanksgiving week, right? We're here on Thanksgiving. It's upon us. I get it. It's time to, to start putting some of the blessings that God has given us into action by serving others. So the question for you this week is, are you ready to stop outsourcing service to others? I know that one hits hard. It's supposed to. Because many, many times we just want to think we can just stroke that check, baby. Just fund it. And while there is a need for that, I'm not saying don't stop giving. I'm saying at some point, you got to get off your keister and let's go. Get out there and help. Do it yourself. All right, fellas. That's what it's all about. Now, if you're listening to The Lion this week, <coughs> happy Thanksgiving. I'm glad you're here. So if you're listening to us when this drops, this is on Monday. So you got a few more days for Thanksgiving. So get ready. But for some reason, you're listening to The Lion with Dennis. For some reason, you're here and you're hanging out and you're still listening to this podcast and you haven't cut it off yet. So I, I want to share something with you because I'm not naive enough to think that everyone who listens to the line with Dennis is a Christian, right? Now you clicked on it. So most guys are, let's just be real, maybe 95%, but there's a percentage that aren't and they're just listening. They're trying to see what this Christian stuff is all about. They're trying to see if we're a bunch of hypocrites. Newsflash, we are. And they're also trying to see, is God trying to tell me something? Like, well, do they really believe this stuff? And I'm just here to tell you. You're listening, you haven't surrendered your life to Christ. Yeah, I believe it. I believe it with all I am. I believe it so much that I went out and started a podcast to just share the good news with you and created a community to bring guys together to help them grow in their faith. And where we just lean in and we believe the word of God to be true, to be inerrant, to be living and breathing. To where we just don't want to just sit on the sidelines and hope people just get it. We want to be active participants out here. So yeah, I, I really do. I believe in all of it. I believe all the stuff in the Bible. I believe all the miracles. I believe all the teachings. <clears throat> and that takes a lot of faith. But you know what? I, I can't imagine going through life without it. Him. To me, the saddest thing out there is someone who goes through life without a relationship with God. And if that's where you are right now, I just want you to know that there's so much more out there for you. There's so much more. You are made in the image of God. It tells us right there in the Bible. We're made in His image. 
Unfortunately, sin separated us from you. And the sin is just something that separates us from God. That's all. So, so many dudes that I talk to think that it's all about just being good. That's God. That's God do good, bro. And I'm like, that's, that, that's, I get it. I, I totally get it. I was that way too. Until I thought about the question, who defines good? Hmm. Well, if it's me, if it's up to me, bro, all you guys will get in if you do good. Right? If you just helped little old ladies cross the street and you read your Bible and gave a little money to your church and, you know, you, don't, you only slept with your wife, no one else, like that's doing good. <clears throat> At that point, you should, you should be allowed in. But it ain't up to me. <laughs> it's up to God. And when we start thinking about good compared to Him, Boy, we all miss that mark, don't we? We just do. We all fall short of the glory of God. So, if we can't be good enough, then how do we get out of here? How do you leave this earth? Something happens. You're going somewhere. How do I make sure I go and I'm with Him? If I can't do it myself and I can't pay for it myself, well, this is why we need a savior. <laughs> we don't need a coach. We need a savior. We don't need a coach to make us better. We need a savior to step in and do something for us that we can't do for ourselves. That's what Jesus did. He came on a rescue mission for you, for me, for the entire world. And he was born of a virgin. He fulfilled all the, the prophecies. He did all the teachings and miracles. And even if you've never read your Bible, check out all the awesome stuff Jesus did. It's pretty incredible. But then what he truly left on that rescue mission for was to pay the penalty for sin for all the, for the entire world. And you pay the penalty of sin through blood, that sacrifice. And his blood was different in our blood. His blood was perfect. Perfect. He was blameless. He was without sin. So the perfect Lamb of God, <coughs> of God, sent to pay for the sins of the entire world. And he went to that cross. And they crucified him. And he didn't pass out or faint or, I don't know, go to sleep or whatever some people may think. <clears throat> nope. Jesus died. He died on the cross. And he made the, the complete full payment. There is nothing left. There's nothing left. They laid him in a tomb. But now it's more like an Airbnb for Jesus because he was only there for three days. Then he rose. He overcame death. And now he sits at the right hand of the Father. And Scripture says no one comes to the Father except through him. There is no other name under heaven that has been given among men by which we must be saved. It's Jesus. It's the only name. It's the name above all names. So that's the name we must confess as Lord. And it just, it's, it's really simple, fellas. You got to just first admit that you're a sinner. <laughs> and that's the hard part sometimes, admitting that we got a need, right? Like, I need something. Like, there's a problem going on. Well, yeah. <clears throat> admit that you're a sinner. That gets it started. Then you got to believe that Jesus is the Son of God. And I mean, you have to believe this stuff. I'm not just saying, like, I believe. Like, no, you got to believe it in your core. Then you got to confess him as Lord of your life. Lord. Jesus, I surrender to you. This means surrendering in your bedroom, in your finances, in your work, mm, parenting, everything. Just give it all to him. My Lord, lead me. I'm following you. I want to do it your way. And at that moment, the Holy Spirit's going to come. It's going to give you a new heart. The, the, the scales are going to fall off. You're going to see the world in a new light. And he's going to start revealing stuff to you differently than you see right now. And it's through the Holy Spirit in which we'll start making decisions and, and learning and growing. But you don't get any of that. Any of it. Unless you surrender to Him. And don't surrender to Him, by the way, thinking that if I just surrender my life to Jesus, no, it's just going to be, it's going to be gravy, baby. It's going to be awesome. Nope. Jesus never promised awesome. It's going to be a whole lot better than what you got right now. But still, you're still going to have pushback, persecution, 
trials. But man, then you but you'll have him with you. And man, so much better. So much better than anything we could do on our own. It's my prayer right now as we get ready to pray. If you're listening to this and you've made it this far and you're not a Christian, you've never surrendered your life to the Lordship of Christ. Maybe the Lord's trying to tell you something. Maybe the Lord's trying to draw you to him. He's waiting for you to take that first step of obedience. That first step could be, could be today on the line with Dennis. I'm going to say this prayer with Chris and I'm going to surrender my life to him. I don't know where it's going to go for after that, Lord, but I'm going to at least take this step. And that's where you are. Let's pray together right now. So, Father, just thank you so much for today. Thank you for this opportunity to share your word. Thank you for this opportunity, Father, for that one listener who they're at the end of their rope. They don't know where to turn. They don't know what to do. They just know they can't do it without you. I don't know why you drew, drew them to the line within us today. I'm so thankful you did, though, God. And I just pray you just put your your peace that passes all understanding upon them as they confess you as Lord and Savior. And Lord, the evil one's going to attack this, this new believer. Man, I know they're going to attack them. So I pray just a hedge of protection, a supernatural hedge of protection around them. Keep them safe. Get them equipped. I pray you put some people in their life that can mentor, guide, direct, encourage them in their new walk with you. And we just want to say, I just love you, God. We praise you. And I do all this according to your will. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, fellas. So look, here's the deal. If you just surrender your life to Christ, first of all, touchdown. That's kind of, that's bigger than any touchdown you'll see this week. I guarantee you that. And then second of all, send me an email at chris at the lion within dot us because I want to hook you up with some free resources. I got a bunch of resources like 10 scriptures. I got a Bible study resources, man. We got tons of stuff, devotions, it's, stuff's out there. I'm going to find out what you need the most and I'm going to get you hooked right up. Okay. Then I also want to help you get plugged into a, a good church. If it, it, And we maybe have resources at the line to find you a local church. But really, just want to just come alongside, just encourage you, right? Just do a virtual fist bump, uh, pray with you. So again, Chris at the line within dot us. Send me a note. Would love to hear from you. Love to jump on a call. And by the way, guys, as we wrap this up, come back on Wednesday, and we're getting close to Thanksgiving. This is Thanksgiving week, but I think you're going to be encouraged by the story that I'm unpack for you on Wednesday. Just a, a story of service, a, a story of, of brotherhood. Uh, just a story of God moments, just God moments. It's just really cool to hear how God just moves uh, in this story. And, and I just thought, you know what? You know what? No better way than on Thanksgiving than to uh, take some time to unpack this. Not that we're seeking any glory ourselves. I just want to encourage you, encourage others to uh, to step up, step in and go serve. All right. So, guys, again, if you like what you're hearing here, go check out the line within us and join the community. We have conversations like this, reflections upon scripture or ideas of being a better husband, better father, uh, better businessman, <clears throat> better businessman. You know, how do we strengthen our mind? We talk about all these things all the time in a safe place. So the line within us is where you find that. All right, fellas, so come on back on Wednesday. We'll see you there. We'll see you there. <laughs> there you go. And uh, again, the line within us is where you can get all the resources. All right, boys, have a great day. Get after it. Keep unleashing the lion within. I don't know about you, but I used to find Mondays really rough. I would find myself trying to reset for work, trying to get my bearing on the family calendar trying to find time for my own spiritual growth and development. And often, I found myself overwhelmed or just flatly ignoring aspects of my life that I know are meaningful to me. What I learned was that if I had immediate access to important and impactful spiritual topics and reflections to start my week, well after the allure of a Sunday sermon has passed, I would set my whole week up to be more meaningful and for the opportunity to make a true impact. If you think that getting such a boost would help your week to get started on the right foot, 
We would love for you to sign up for the Weekly Roar, which is our newsletter that is produced by the Lion Within Us. Each week, we'll deliver a powerful reflection and practical steps to help you apply Scripture with clarity and purpose, all being rooted in light and truth. So in just a few minutes, we hope to arm you with insights for living out biblical leadership with confidence and strength and maybe even have a little extra bounce in your step. If that sounds useful, head over to thelionwithin.us slash roar to sign up today. That's thelionwithin.us slash R-O-A-R to get your weekly roar today.